first of all, thank you for all the speakers of this session. And although we run out of time and it is supposed to start a break now for half a, an hour, I think if, if, if you all agree, we can have 10 minutes panel discussion for the session. We can we can take it from, from, this, from this break. Um, because, um, well, I think everybody is still here. So I think you agree with, with this idea. Okay, thank you, Paul, for confirming. Um, okay, um, I had some questions for, for the, I mean, um, concerning all, all the, all the presentations that we have in the, we had in this session. Uh, so maybe I, I'll start with it. Uh, especially uh, this, uh, this idea came or this question or this discussion came from, from Paul's talk. Um, in this session, we have seen that many, many approaches, many different approaches. Uh, I didn't see any overlap, like everybody's doing things. Uh, sometimes even the same process is being done uh, very differently. So actually, as I said, I, I didn't see any, anybody using the same approach for, for even a small part of, of the, of the, of the of the pipeline that they were proposing. So, for example, one question for Paul, but I think this this can be extending for everybody is when when we are um, approaching some some problem, some gap that we see in the community. Like for example, in Paul's case, is the the evaluation. Uh, so, a direct question, uh, Paul, how do you plan to convince others to use your representation? How can we? Uh, which plans do you have so that people will eventually use your your representation uh, for, I mean, um, you said that you are proposing a new standard. There are 15 standards. And after your proposal, there will be 16 standards. <laughs> so how can we avoid this? How, how can we convince others to use what we are using instead of Point number one, in our case, we're working on a data set, a significantly large data set, but it's not ready. We will announce it uh, when it's done, as, as Valve says. And also we have other plans, for instance, trying to support more formats, but um, it's something that's currently a little bit on hold because again, I'm a little bit out of cycles right now. But overall, the idea is that we want to essentially share the tools and share the way that we do things and hopefully people will follow. That's a little bit, Mm, our idea and also of course like the more we work with uh with these tools and, and and we see the good things and the bad things they will probably also be updated to reflect the needs so the more time that we and more research goes into into our work hopefully the more people will will see the benefits of, of trying to do something that is you know designed to be more more comfortable for more people that's a little bit the, the idea that we have for the future right now You're muted. Okay. Now I was saying that, that that if anybody wants to add something to this, because my impression is that uh, I don't know if this only this community, but that when people start doing some OMR uh, project, uh, even it happened to me for, for sure. I mean, it's it's like everybody. It's it's hard to see people reusing work from others, uh, like even for some parts of the pipeline that we can consider solve for or that we have good approaches and, and general approaches. Uh, we see like new papers doing similar things from, from scratch, of course, with new data, new evaluation metrics sometimes. Um, so I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to keep track of, of the state of the art. Um, well, Bertrand, uh, you have your, your hand raised, so. Uh, yes, it was just maybe to try to uh, to converge on the metric because I, I think uh, we really need in our community on, on OMR to to have one metric where everybody agrees that uh, uh, it, it 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 allows to both uh, detect where OMR systems are uh, needs improvement. And also to be able to compare uh, one OMR to another, and I I think we we will need to discuss all together and and and, 
and try to to see uh, on the different metrics which exist and uh, which one seems the best uh, for fitting uh, our needs and uh, if there are some need to improve one of these uh, to try to agree. I, I, of course, it's difficult to uh, all agree on the on, on the same, but I think it's it's really needed to for the for the community. And maybe a specific uh, session, uh, uh, specific meetings uh, with all people who are interested in uh, both people who are working on the, on metrics uh, and building metrics, and and people who are working on the, on OMR uh, who wants to to contribute and discuss about it uh, would be welcome. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, just like a while ago, different people were doing different definitions of objects for object recognition. Now, uh, obviously, the big issue or like the, the blocking issue was uh, getting uh, some kind of relatively complete uh, and tractable encoding. So we, we see uh, encodings uh, prop up. A uh, crop up, right? Uh, so there is uh, Paul's, uh, MTN, uh, there is Daniel's representation. Uh, we did something in LLX, but like this, uh, it makes sense, I think, to standardize uh, as far as we have agreement on what the tasks are. So, like David said in the keynote, there are many different things we can do with OMR. And once we are evaluating with respect to our users' needs, then because each of our projects is meeting slightly different needs. For, so for instance, like our collaboration on OMR with a library is really intended for retrieval. Uh, Philips is really intended to produce nice additions. So we it's hard to uh, then agree on, on how these projects should be evaluated, right? What metrics are relevant to us. But there is certainly also the case to be made that like there is just sheet music, it's a closed system or relatively closed system, closed enough. And maybe we can find uh, evaluation metrics that are a little bit independent of the final usage of the system. And I would definitely love to have the evaluation working group to find like, there won't be a way to choose a best standard, like always disadvantages, advantages, but uh, at least we should choose like, a standard? Uh, no. <laughs> Philip. Uh, uh, Philip, you're you're muted. I think. Yeah, sorry. Think... Yeah, so just to add a few words on this topic. So, so far we use this. This we use. We looked at this music diff uh, system that already exists, which does nice things. Uh, well, from what presented Paul, I think there is a very nice idea. The necessary idea is to have a representation which is uh, unambiguous uh, in order to have a, to have a standard representation for of a score that helps to be compared. So, in, in music diff, this is done with music twenty one. I don't know if uh, it's deterministic to have a representation in music twenty one, but definitely, I think a working group would help to see this kind of issue. And then to look at the tools uh, to understand whether the issues are satisfied or not. So, I just want to uh, reiterate that we are we are we are keen to participate to a group like that, and I think it's really something which is essential to the community in order to assess uh, what we are producing. Alicia, um, hi. Um, I would like to add that. Um, we all have data sets and Paul already mentioned that uh, we are currently working in preparing a, a big data set on handwritten scores, but uh, Jan um, is also working on this and there are many others. You also have some others uh, and the idea, because uh, Paul already showed a table in which there were many different data sets because we all work as we can, but in the end we work isolated. So if we think in some common um, uh, format that 
helps to go from one to another. So for example, we, we have some conversion from this MTN format to the music XML, and there are some other converse, conversions to some other formats. We can reach this common format that helps in using all the data that is available. So we go all together, we join all the data that is available for training deep learning systems. And the same happens with the metrics. So we facilitate the uh, comparisons among all the different uh, systems that already exist. So uh, the idea is not to propose yet another format, it's just to try to propose a format and a metric that helps in integrating everything that we have so that we can work and benefit from each other. That's that's the plan. And, and for this, we we don't only work on data set, we also work on scripts that help in converting one format to another. So that's that's basically the plan. And this is also an open call for everybody. So uh, you already have uh, data sets, you all have uh, data sets everywhere, printed, handwritten, uh, from mensural or uh, some other uh, notations, but if we try to join all the efforts, we can benefit from all the data sets that are being done for training. That's it. Um, well, I mean, the, the proposals, I, I think we can hear the same proposals year by year. Over how many editions? This is the sixth. I think the first edition of Worms also had a feature paper by Jan talking about evaluation, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I mean, I think we, we all agree on the problems and the potential solutions, but I guess the daily work, it's a, a different thing. Yeah, from my point of view, the question would be uh, if there were such a working group for say evaluation topics, metrics, et cetera, how do you, envision this to actually look like? I mean, I think it's great that we come together here once a year and talk about these things, but really they're like also for other standards, et cetera, you have these working groups that keep pushing this topic. And I have not participated in any of these. I don't know how these look like, but maybe some of you have. So if you can shed some light on this, how do you make these things? How do they work? How do you organize them? How do you keep them going? Is this a question to me? To everyone. <laughs> OK. In our case, uh, we are open to collaborate and to discuss all this. So we have already discussed at IGDAR uh, with Jorge, with Bertrand, with Giri. Uh, there was also Tristan there. So uh, we are more or less uh, discussing this in the different conferences. But I think that it's, um, I think that it's important to keep on discussing this via online meetings or mini working groups. So um, in the case of evaluation, for example, if somebody is interested in uh, joining the discussions that we already have with Jan and Giri, uh, so please just send an, an email and then you are super welcome because the more opinions, probably the better will be the, the proposal for the community. Bertrand, I don't know if you would like to add something or Jan. No, I, I totally agree, uh, and uh, I think we need to 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 make this working group uh, work, uh, and uh, and don't and, and I I think we need the regular meetings, and uh, right now, starting now, uh, not uh, waiting uh, one year and 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 do it uh, during conferences. It's not it's not enough. And I think we we are now we can see with all these these projects uh, uh, it's more and more mature and we re really need something some metrics and, and as as you said to share uh, all the data sets we have it's also an objective of collab score it's to to provide the, the annotation uh, of the scores which will be uh, done um, collectively and. Uh, and, and so, yes, let's start uh, as soon as possible by uh, online meetings. Well, oh, wow. Sorry, everyone. Go. For, for these matters, uh, I think Adrian Halobat is with us. I, I, he was on the Music XML committee and as well as the M MXN. So I, I don't know if uh, maybe you could share your expertise on how these kinds of 
committees are usually hung because uh, um, probably yeah. in, in this case, I think it's it's quite relevant to have your expertise here. Yeah, thank you. I've actually spent the last five minutes looking for the how to raise my hand and I haven't found it. So thanks for <laughs> bringing it up. Yeah. Hi, I'm Adrian. I'm in there's a, a group called the W3C Music Notation Community Group. I'm one of the three co-chairs and we're basically the stewards of the Music XML standard, the Smoofle font layout standard, which is a font thing for music glyphs, and then MNX, which is intended to be the successor to Music XML, which cleans up, hopefully cleans up a lot of the warts uh, with Music XML. Uh, so yeah, just some general advice, I guess, would be have we, we have a meeting every two weeks, a video chat, and that's just very good because it's uh, keeps momentum going and it's kind of, it introduces some accountability because if two weeks have gone by and you have a scheduled meeting and nothing has happened, you start feeling bad. So, you know, it's just nice having things scheduled. Um, what and uh, also having a mailing list and a GitHub discussion community is also good. Just a, a central place for people to congregate digitally. Yeah, it's all kind of basic bread and butter kind of stuff. Nothing really revolutionary. Can you explain to me how does the distributed thinking in that kind of group works? Like, like how does it like what do you talk about? Uh, so, so for example, I, I don't know, like there's an issue with uh, slurs on two voices and music XML. So in the MNX group, you try to like think about the specific issue and you assign it like to, to people to figure out proposals and then you discuss them or, um, because I'm just curious as to how it works, like uh, practically. Yeah. the. Unfortunately, there are very few people in the world who are have the combination of knowledge of music and coding and actually the time and also care to think about this in their spare time. So it's a very small community, much smaller than, for instance, what we have here. So uh, usually what happens with something like that, if there's a problem with a very specific, usually they're very, very specific notational situations. Uh, the three of us co-chairs will talk about it in our bi-weekly video chats. And among the three of us, there's a good kind of diverse expertise in this stuff. So chances are we'll uh, come up with a, at least a draft solution, and then we'll post it on GitHub and and also send out an email to the no, everyone who's subscribed to the notation community group and ask for their feedback. We're always kind of desperate to get feedback, frankly, because a lot of times if if we post a proposal and it gets two thumbs up emojis on GitHub, we're like, yes, two people. So uh, yeah, that, I think that's the hardest part is getting people uh, to actually invest the time and Okay, so, so the idea is like to to validate that the new design is not gonna fail in the future once it gets uh, like implemented. Exactly, the music notation. I mean, as we all know, is just like thousands of edge cases. So we just need to think about: did we handle every possible edge case? And that's, I think, the primary benefit of getting community feedback is there's might be somebody who has a totally different conception of how music notation should be modeled. And we want to make sure that our thing is at least still compatible with theirs. Okay, thank you.